and welcome to Chat with you. Carrie. I'm your host, Carrie Lane. I'm super excited because we're talking about IFLA again, and it is one week away. Joining me now is IFLA's managing director, my good friend, Nitsen. Welcome, and thank you for joining me. Thank you, Carrie, for having me here. Wonderful to see you again. Yes. 20 years of IFLA. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I was trying to think of when... I first started, how many years it's been? So I was thinking it's 2009-ish, and so it's my 13th year. When did you first start with the festival and you didn't start as managing director? I have been with the festival for 17 years. And um, let's first talk about the 20th anniversary of IFLA, a big, big year. Uh, very few film festivals in the world survive such a long stretch, such a long period of time. And I'm very excited to share that this will be our 20th anniversary. Festival has been held every year, except for the last two when it was virtual, but it's been held in person for all these years. And we are excited to come back for the in-person festival this year again. Uh, as far as my journey is concerned, this is my 17th year with IFLA. And I think um, over the years, I've done different roles started as a volunteer i used to just come in for a couple of hours maybe for the entire day entire festival and then sl slowly started getting st uh, into the staff roles for individual departments and then uh, eventually went into uh, a bigger role uh, as managing director of the festival so it's been an exciting 17-year uh, journey for me and uh, i'm excited uh, for the 20th year again yeah, I remember you being uh, in charge of transportation when I first started. So for people who haven't been volunteered with the festival, one, I do highly recommend it. It's a great way to see, meet people, great way to see films. And I remember sitting in the theater and all the staff went up in front of everybody and introduced themselves and what their departments are. Uh, what is What are some of your favorite IFLA memories? There are uh, way too many for us to talk about in this one live interview. But what I would like to share is that there is one pattern that emerges every uh, at every festival year on uh, year. And that's something I would like to share, which is that as uh, filmmakers get more comfortable uh, after a day or two, and once the guard is down, the party is over, and the cameras are shut down when they just kick back relax and chat with us about their dreams their disappointments i think that's a beautiful experience to be able to connect with the filmmakers at the festival and on the other hand to be able to talk to the audience who sometimes wait for several minutes sometimes an hour after the screening because they want to talk to the director or with some of our staff members um, as a reflection on what they just saw, because it just stunned them. So these two memories are uh, some of the most um, precious gifts, I would say, uh, of uh, working at a festival. And in that, um, on those lines, I would like to add that IFLA's biggest success is also the fact that it is able to make an intimate festival, meaning despite the professionalism, despite all the uh, trappings of a well-run large-scale festival for 20 years, we still manage to give our audience and also our filmmakers uh, intimate experience. And I think that is uh, a success of this festival and we hope to continue that this year and going forward. Absolutely. Film festivals in general and absolutely IFLA has a sense of community with the filmmakers that as an audience goer, you have a chance to speak with them, as you were saying, and the opportunities that IFLA gives those filmmakers. There's some interesting events over the course of this upcoming festival. If you want to talk about that, like there's different interactions with the public, too, besides just film festival screenings. Absolutely. Uh, so let's start with the films first. We have mm -hmm. 10 feature films, 16 short films, and one live read event, and one masterclass. So we have gamut of channels and interactions with the film world. 
So the features range from different time periods, and we'll get into some detail around that. They range from one region of India to another extreme, sometimes Punjab in the north to almost the southern tip of India from Kerala. On the east, we have a film set in Calcutta. We have a film set in the Western Ghats of uh, Karnataka. So it covers different landscapes. And as you know, India is such a large country and diverse country that these are like uh, different nations, if you will. So it's a great uh, opportunity for audience sitting in Los Angeles to experience this. Now, in addition to that, what is different this year is we have a spotlight on South Asia, meaning we are expanding the reach and going beyond India. And we have films from Nepal, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Afghanistan. So that really expands the horizon for all our audience and also for people who want to, people who are making films and who want to submit next year. There's a new slate or new section, if you will, Spotlight on South Asia. As part of Spotlight on South Asia, we have a special shots program and also one feature film, Rihanna from Bangladesh. So that's the range of the landscape and the areas we are covering. Now, as soon as you do that, you also realize that automatically you're covering multiple languages. So such a thrilling experience uh, within a day or two. It's a four day festival. But if someone wants to buy a pass, let's say just on Saturday, in one day, their pass becomes more valuable than going to individual screenings. And if they are able to come for another day, that's another bonus. So within that short time frame, they can actually time travel and experience this entire region of South India. Sorry, uh, Southern Asia. Yeah, it's always, I always enjoy too seeing the variety of films and then from, as you were saying, different regions and everything. The, uh, also the, you mentioned the master class as well, which is something a bit different this year. So yeah, talk about that. And what are the, what are the new things this year? Because it's the 20th anniversary. What did IFLA go? You know what? We need to do this to celebrate the 20th. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's been a, not just exciting lineup, but exciting introduction of new programs. So let's talk about the masterclass. Masterclass will be held on Saturday at 3 p.m. April 30th. And it's a masterclass with Anurag Kashyap. Anurag Kashyap doesn't need any introduction is one of those legends in Indian cinema where usually an actor is most uh, famous, popular, loved by audience, and he has that kind of a fan following, although he's the director. So he's really giving attention to the, the aspect of who's really the maker of a film, uh, as against just the, the hero in Indian terms, the lead actor, protagonist, who usually enjoys the adulation of common man. So Anurag is that figure who's transcended, is that director who's transcended that line and now has his own um, very sincere following. So what a fortune for us sitting in Los Angeles to get, get to hear about this author's journey right from his humble beginnings to where he is today at the top of the echelon, if you will, in Indian cinema. Uh, so that masterclass will be uh, something that not just general audience, but students of cinema, and of which there are plenty in Los Angeles, uh, will get to directly interact with uh, Anurag Kashyap on Saturday, April 30th at 3 p.m. Nice. Uh, yeah, no. calling back. Oh, go ahead. So, um, and you also mentioned uh, what are the exciting things because mm -hmm. of the anniversary. So one I spoke about Spotlight on South Asia, it's a new introduction and we are hoping that this will continue over the years in the future years. Uh, another exciting thing is our closing night is different this year. It's a live read event. And uh, of the film Uncle Phil, uh, Uncle Alim. And this is from an, our um, Ifla Alam. We are going to have 14 actors and they will be doing a live reading of the script. 
Now, what is interesting here is think about it, that we get to sometimes see a script online or elsewhere or through friends, something that has been published, and we get to see the end product, this film that has been made in theaters or with our uh, streaming opportunities. But rarely do we get to see something in between when the script is ready, but now the actors are going to bring it to life just by their voice and tone and being on stage. So that's another opportunity for many artists who are trying to learn the tricks of the trade to go and see this live event, which will be on May 1st on Sunday night. And um, so I'm very excited two... about those people too. There's a great lineup of the actors that will be on stage. Oh, yes. Looking forward to that. Yes. So that's another part that you brought up, the lineup of actors. Mm -hmm. uh, many folks from the Indian diaspora based in Los Angeles, very involved in the movie industry, and many of them successful at different levels, uh, whether it's on the in the TV side or in the feature film side or short film world. So that has been another transition we are, uh, we've made over the years is that the focus is not just on films made in India and now expanding beyond India, but also about uh, the Indian diaspora filmmakers who are based in LA or New York or other parts of US or some of them even in Europe. So we're bringing all of that together and expanding on that journey uh, in this 20th year. Nice. Were there other, were you involved with the process of the planning of like, hey, what should we do different this year to celebrate the anniversary or um, any behind the scenes of how that process came about? Yes, I was very much involved in that. But at the same time, do you recognize that as far as the programming is concerned, that's a very independent uh, body or department. And mm -hmm. we are very fortunate to have a wonderful team not just in us based in la but also in india we have some um, experts journalists film critics uh, who are advising us from india and uh, now we have uh, expanded our team here also which includes the screeners apart from uh, the co-directors of programming and associate programmers so the team has really expanded and there are more uh, inputs that we get before we reach a decision on films. And I talked about this particular department because it's the one that works the longest period of time. And as far as the adjustment, uh, not just because of a 20th year, but because this is post pandemic era that we are now uh, going to experience, we're taking the learnings from last two years. We are uh, seeing what worked as a virtual festival for two years. And what are those elements we can incorporate even if it's a live in-person event, uh, in-person festival? An example being our one-on-one -on -one program, which is a signature event uh, for Indian Film Festival of Los Angeles, where we bring industry executives, different groups, different departments, agents, producers, um, uh, set, I mean, who are based in Hollywood, and we connect them one-on-one -on -one with the filmmakers who have uh, who are attending the festival so that program is going to be virtual and that has allowed us to engage with more people because of the flexibility of time and um, that's something we learned during the pandemic we would not have done it if we had not learned there so we are taking mm -hmm. those experiences the second part being our staff meetings uh, early on we made the decision and of course uh, we were not completely out of the woods when we started the planning process as far as the pandemic is concerned. Now we are in a much as a society in a much better shape than where we were just three months ago. So during this time, uh, we had most of our meetings over Zoom. Large staff gave them the flexibility, something we might not have done two years before. So we're learning from our um, pandemic experiences, incorporating them into the uh, the new post-pandemic world. Uh, I was going to say two things. One, uh, you mentioned the co-directors of programming. If you are just tuning into this episode, Chat with Carrie, go check out our other video. We talked with Thule and Ritesh, where the co-directors of programming a bit more in depth about the programming. And that was very fun. So thank you to both 
Thule and Ritesh. And then also that's really interesting about the one-on-one. -on -one. That's another fun memory of, I was a volunteer on those. And uh, for people just listening, it's kind of like a speed dating for the filmmakers and executives of them talking about their projects and everything. And for volunteers, we kind of help facilitate um, just the streamline of the event. But that's, that's great that it could be online in the sense of maybe more access and more flexibility on the time. Yes, absolutely. Um, but let's also talk about the films because that's where, you know, the meat of the matter is of, for the festival. So I mentioned the gamut of, um, you know, the range and the gamut of landscapes and periods. So let's go into some of the details there. Uh, the opening night film, it's called Last Film Show. It's set in 90s Gujarat, Gujarat being one region of India, very particular history, very particular uh, flavor to this region. And you get to see that in this film. And also, it's a film about film. So it's even more exciting. That's the opening night film, last film show set in 1990s Gujarat. Apart from that, there is a film set in the 1960s India. Now, that's unique because you usually don't get to see independent cinema, which is set in a period which is like long ago. And to recreate that is harder. And therefore, I'm excited to share that Shankar's Fairies is a film set in 1962 Lucknow. The part 1962 matters because it's post-colonial India. India is coming out of the shadows of the British Raj, finding its own feet. And at that time, there is this uh, very delicate film about a beautiful relationship between this young daughter of a police chief on his estate. And she's, uh, you know, having this beautiful connection with the head servant of the family who reads out these fantastical stories and therefore the name Shankar's Fairies. So set in 1960s, specifically 1962 Lucknow. The second part, Lucknow. Lucknow is a city which is uh, the heartland of India and uh, see that uh, period and that uh, that heartland of India is beautiful along with Allahabad. Now, there is another movie named Shoebox, a feature film again, which is contemporary challenges or brings uh, to surface the recent socio-political climate and that's uh, set in Allahabad, which is another city in Uttar Pradesh and which is like a, also a heartland of India. So I just told you about 60s Lucknow, 90s Gujarat, and then contemporary uh, Allahabad. So you have a suddenly a large range of time period and also different areas of India being covered there. Uh, then let's move to south of India to Kerala, movie called Paka, River of Blood. It's one of those uh, films which can uh, qualify as a thriller or partly close to like a horror genre. Beautifully shot. Um, the forests of Kerala are just gorgeous and it really captures that uh, in a haunting way because there's a, a feuding uh, families um, which are mm. dumping bodies in this river and therefore the name River of Blood, Paka. Mm. And then um, let's go to the east of India. Uh, feature named Once Upon a Time in Calcutta. And uh, this is just about a person's search for new beginnings after their entire life has fallen apart for uh, due to a tragedy. And then uh, discovering that uh, within the city of Calcutta. So, um, you know, th there are extremes of despair and hope between which this person is floating and uh, captures Calcutta in a beautiful way as well. Uh, Apart from that, there's north of India, Punjab is a state there and there's a film set in Punjab. Now, it's not just about the region. Some of these movies are capturing the flavor of that region or the, uh, the stereotype that is, uh, you know, popular or well known for that region. An example being um, Jaggi, which is set in rural Punjab. And uh, that's about uh, a schoolboy who's uh, important and is mislabeled by his peers as gays. And because of that, uh, the impact of his uh, on his relationship with his friends in a region which uh, boasts of like fertile farm uh, farmlands and virile men. 
So that's that's a very interesting uh, regional context, and uh, the filmmaker has taken you know really brought to surface the the challenges of. Uh, that kind of toxic uh, masculinity in India and especially in this region of India. Uh, so there are, like I like I just said, there are several features and shots that cover a wide range of uh, of cinema, and I I hope that everyone is uh, able to go and watch these films in person. Well, you did mention time travel, and now that makes a lot more sense of the films over different pieces of time and space. And uh, that reminds me of, as we were sharing memories of IFLA, for those of you watching, leave a comment about one of your favorite IFLA memories. Uh, I was going to say, any other ones that have come to mind of hanging out with filmmakers before we get on to our next segment? Um, I think um, what I would do is I'll, I'll share about a couple of uh, additional features. Now, mm -hmm. one is uh, Pedro which is showing again on april 30th at 2 30 pm about a feudal karnataka community another beautiful region almost center south of india it covers western ghats and the landscapes there and then invisible demons which is a los angeles premiere again um, uh, really engaging with the climate change and the apocalypse associated with that the shots program, like I mentioned, which I always recommend because within one and a half to two years, you get to see a very wide range of visions. So shots program one and shots program two. But outside of that, like I said, there is spotlight on South Asia. So there is a third shots program because of it. So um, these are the various films that are being shown this year, apart from the masterclass and the live live event so please consider buying a fest pass or all access pass it really is in a very relatively economical way you get to really experience a very very wide range it's really value for money even if you attend one long day let's say saturday uh, it becomes more valuable than buying individual tickets so i really recommend all our audience to buy the fest pass all right. Now, what does the next 20 years of IFLA look like? I think I will breathe a little bit and then think a little more about <laughs> that because this has been um, a challenge, but uh, we've, we've passed it quite successfully so far in the planning and hopefully it goes into the ex execution as smoothly as well. But uh, very briefly speaking, we would like this is just a beginning, these new features or new programs that we've added. And let's see how the response is on the live read, on the masterclass, on uh, Spotlight on South Asia. We would like to make that a permanent feature if possible, year on year. That would be one goal. Uh, some consideration about um, adding some mentorship lab if possible. That's in the discussion. So, But none of these are officially announced or they are going to be permanent necessarily, but we are considering all those and hopefully we'll see them for the next 20 years. Well, looking forward to seeing what IFLA has ahead of them. Uh, for more information on the festival, visit IndianFilmFestival.org. Thank you so much for talking with me, Nitin. It's great to dive in depth to the festival, look back at what has been and what we have to look forward to next week, which is almost here. Thank you to Dia TV for giving this opportunity and very nice talking to you, Karen. Yes. Well, thank you everyone so much for watching uh, Chat with Carrie. I'm your host, Carrie Lane with Dia TV. Mm -hmm.